Good morning, YouTube. Well, my morning, which of course is sometime in the afternoon, that time being exactly 4 o'clock p.m. It's Thursday, May 18th, 2023. Um, I'm in a lot better mental state today than I was yesterday. I've, I've had enough time to uh, kind of process what happened at Amazon yesterday and get some sleep. I haven't um, made any effort yet to try to um, appeal my Amazon um, firing process. Um, and I'm going to do that. I really am. Uh, I, I, other than I did have a coworker that actually approached me, um, as, as I was, she, she came out for work a little early or actually I want to say she came out for break early. She was given VTO. Um, so she was leaving the building before everybody kind of did the mass exit for first break, which is right around the time that HR gave me the news that I was fired and, um, uh, and then told me, and then, you know, Maya came over and told me about, you know, what I could do about it to try to appeal it. Um, and I need to do it. If, if, even if I don't win the appeal from what she said, when your when your appeal's going on, it's you're, you're paid for the time you're not working. So, I mean, it's. It's free money, and I'm not really the guy to go for free money, but oh, I take some free money. So I've been uploading uh, yesterday's vlogs, and um, been uploading yesterday's vlogs, and and trying to watch them, and and um, wow, um, you know, it, I don't expect anybody's gonna watch them all. I'm going through a lot right now. Um, it's one of the reasons I I grab that large micro SD card for Obama phone three. So I can just record a whole lot. Um, I'm just pretty much bumping them online as quickly as I can get them stabilized and bumped online as opposed to the usual waiting for them to get enough traction and hits that, you know, they actually get some views. Views are not important right now. Documenting the struggle I'm going through right now is important and documenting my thoughts right now is important to me. Um, and, um, I have my uh, I have my citation and summons in my pocket. Court is tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Um, it is an assault charge, some specialized kind of an assault charge. I know I'm not, I'm probably not going to have time to get to any kind of legal library today. I'm hoping maybe ASU library is still open kind of after hours-ish. I'm maybe going to try to go there. I don't have a huge plan for today other than um, right now uh, it's 4.03. I know if I try to take the bus to Rob's shop, then I'm probably going to end up getting there after five. And um, he's possibly already gone for the day. At this point, he's kind of shown me that if I call him on the phone, that he will pretend to be there even if he's not there. and Or, or just not answer. And and I, I'm, I'm kind of at my wit's end what to do about this. I mean, Rob is somebody that I considered a friend, but I, I'm kind of... Are you considering that with all that's going on right now? Um, um, and he is in possession of like all of my vehicles except for the pens. So, um, which I don't obviously have room to store, you know, all of them. Um, any, any of them other than the Benz and the Saturn at the moment. So, um, to, you know, to say nothing of you know, the cost of towing them and dealing with them and whatnot. So... But I really do need to get get transportation going in again if I'm going to get my life, you know, back under control. Uh, anyway, without further ado, um, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm, I'm going to summon a Waymo right now. So I'm going to see how much y'all can <laughs> see how much of the, the one phone and one old beat up phone with a with a OK camera can capture what I'm doing. But there's the Waymo one app. And um And like right now, it's asking where to. Now, unlike other transportation apps, um, yeah, I to search to search for destination, you kind of have to find it on a map and point at it. Although when you click search for destination, it'll show other places that you've gone. So, RNL Automotive is uh sorry this is so terrible quality um rnl automotive is still on the list 
So there it is. It uh, put a little put a little dot on the map. Sorry for my inability to uh, do that. Okay, now this is a little distressing. Um, and I was listening to yesterday's vlogs, and I mentioned that I had had issues with Waymo yesterday, and that I that I wanted to talk about that. I never did get around to talking about that because just everything else I had to deal with yesterday was a was a bigger deal. And and I, it wasn't until long after the Waymo part of my adventure yesterday that um that I had the the new card in Obama phone three so I could do that. But I did get this exact same screen here and this is a problem I'm having with Waymo and I wish I wish it was clear and I don't know there's any or either way to clear it, but I can kind of explain it. So the 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 black pin is where RNL Automotive is. It's where my Saturn is, uh, Rob's shop. The green dot is where it thinks a safe drop-off location is. Now I can get with a self-driving car not wanting to pull into Rob's shop. That driveway is hectic and it's very blind coming out. Um, I've had some near misses just trying to pull out of there. Um, I can get with it wanting to drop me somewhere else. I could see it wanting to drop me at the Chevron and tell me I walk across the street from the Chevron. Plenty of parking at the Chevron. But where it wants to drop me off, and this is where it tried to drop me off yesterday, which was a very unsafe location, is um, on 40th Street, just south of University Drive, there where the green dot is, uh, in the traffic lane, in the northbound traffic lane. That is a traffic lane that's kind of, it's kind of a blind corner there, and people are people tend to drive fast because people in Phoenix drive fast on strows. They don't really watch what the fuck they're doing. And it basically stopped in the traffic lane, blocked traffic, and we had some pretty interesting near misses of uh, people turning behind and nearly ramming into the JAG I-PACE, which insisted on stopping there. Um, and then I... I aggravated the situation by something else, which I'm going to try to explain as we're on the trip. But anyway, this is something that happens. It'll, it'll tell you when you when you pick up or drop off somewhere that you, there may be some walking involved. Like in this instance, it shows where it's going to drop me off. The little dotted line between the green dot and the, the black pin is, uh, oh, and as you see, the place it wants to drop me off is a little bit uh, north of the bus stop. The bus stop is on the map. I find it interesting bus stops are actually included on the on this these little maps. Oh, but of course it's Google and Google has bus stops. It's a it's lifted from Google Maps because Waymo is a Google product. Anyway, it's saying two minutes walk after drop off. Heads up, this is the closest the car can get to your destination. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm going to explain as we as we get going. I, I need to not waste any more time on this, but I'm going to explain more about what happened yesterday, and I'm going to contact. Uh, oh, shit. I'm going to contact uh, Waymo rider support as soon as I get in the car, or soon there after I get in the car, to let them uh, let them know that, hey, it's trying to take me to a problematic drop-off location, and um, let's not do this again. I tried to explain to them what that was like. I was going round and round in circles with customer service. Um, granted, I was in a pretty panicked sort of state because that was pretty much my entire day yesterday. Um, and, but I mean, yeah, the panic that I was going through with all the, uh, the, the problem of where I, I had hit a button on the center console that like I get, don't grab the wheel, don't hit the pedals. I get that. But the button that I hit was on the center console, which I thought it, it looked like it had been relabeled to me and i thought it would interact with the whole you know so with the whole waymo touchscreen and whatnot to, to change from the i thought it would change from the display of the music screen to the and I'll, I'll show you that when we get in the car uh i thought it would toggle between the music screen and the uh and the transit uh, what do you call it the, the driving screen that shows you know where the vehicles are around you and the what the what the waymo see, driver sees and that sort of thing that's what i thought it was going to do or maybe vice versa anyway i hit that and, and i'll explain more when we get in the car anyway i need to confirm this but but yeah um so i'm on the phone with with or on the on the you know intercom in the car with waymo support and i'm just like we just need to not be here and they're like well and i finally was just like i'm okay i'm just gonna exit the vehicle but there's not cars coming at me right at the moment, but this is not a safe place to stop. At which point they're like, oh yeah, we'll put that, we'll make a note and we'll, we'll fix that. Well, as you can see, it's, it's saying it's wanting to do the same drop off again. So they have not fixed it. So, but let me confirm that. 
Um, confirm. Um, that is my, not my address, but it is close enough. Uh, so click next. 12.35 for the ride. Um, should I be pissing away? Wow, it's telling me to turn on Bluetooth. I wasn't aware I had turned off Bluetooth. Um, it's telling me I should arrive there by 4.34. Rob should still be there at 4.34. It says it'll pick me up in about nine minutes. Um, 12.35, that's a pretty darn reasonable charge. I've taken this trip with Lyft and Uber before when I've been really pressed for time, and it's been closer to $24. So... Um, Granted, I mean, I could ride there for free via Valley Metro, but it involves two buses and often takes me about an hour and a half. So I'm saving about an hour of my life. Eh, I'll think 1235 for that. This is also, I'm doing it much for the adventure and share the experience. And I finally have the ability to kind of record what's going on with the app and record what's going on with, you know, just I've been wanting to share the Waymo experience and I've had several Waymo, uh, you know, related videos um but as a lot of the more interesting stuff is happening i've had to had to um stop shooting video and i've noticed other people that are even having more professionally produced videos have had to stop shooting video because they're like oh how do i open the door how do i open the door yeah you're not seeing the prompt on your waymo app of where you click to open the door because you're using that same device to shoot video the only difference between them and me is that you know i'm they're they're downloading those you know videos probably from the cell phone to an editor maybe they're editing on an editor in on that same phone or whatever and i'm just uploading shit directly from my phones because uh the only thing i've learned how to kind of have well is actually a windows software i've i've learned how to edit video in but i'm not sure that that's installed or working on my windows computer which is which is right there um yeah um i need to make that computer more a part of my life because uh, I it would it's a tool and I'm not using it. But anyway, still seven seven minutes to get to me. So see you in seven minutes. Rider only mode. Pick up at four eighteen p.m. Shows the plate number and the little Dunkin' Donuts. Oh no, that's Daniel Daniels. That's what the DD is. Um, six minutes now. If I zoom. And sorry, this looks so terrible, but if I zoom out on that map, which I got to put on my knees to do that, it'll show me where the vehicle is coming from. Oh, yeah, and it's not far away at all. Um, sorry, this is so unprofessional, but uh, I can see on this map. Sorry that it's capturing it so poorly. Um, but, yeah, the vehicle is coming from just, just north. It looks like, yeah, it's about halfway between the Loop 202 and uh mcdowell on 44th street so it's just coming straight up 44th street hooking a right on oak and coming over here <coughs> excuse me so it's estimating six minutes um i do believe it's in the upper 90s right now probably about 96 degrees outside but i'm gonna go ahead and uh head outside so i'm not trying to do the uh door shuffle with two phones and a front door that's kind of difficult to lock because it doesn't line up quite correctly. Um, it actually doesn't feel too bad out today. It, 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 you know, it's amazing how so many different factors can affect how a temperature feels. Um, I mean, of course, there's the, the overused Phoenix saying of, oh, it's a dry heat. Um, it, it is a dry heat, and, and certainly upper 90s in Phoenix, in 90s in Phoenix, don't feel as bad as they do in, say, um, Georgia, you know, because, because it, it is dry. I mean, there's probably no, you know, the relative humidity is probably negligible at this point. Um, so looking at the Waymo app, the car has made it to, uh, to McDowell Road. Uh, it looks like it's crossing McDowell Road. Now, I've noticed on this screen, if the car is at a red light, uh, it'll actually stop there, and it'll put up a little, little 
icon next to it of a traffic light with a red light. So um, it's estimating four minutes. I, I know how quick it is when I drive that. I, I think it'll be here a little sooner than that. Oh, definite temperature change. Definite temperature. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, you know, I, I would imagine that that upper 90s that I saw, and I forget exactly what it was that I saw in uh, Obama Phone 4 for some reason regularly gives me push through messages of what the temperature is. Um, I'm annoyed that that's a default function. Sometimes it's it's like, why is it telling me this? But I, 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 I'm on the fence. Like sometimes I just find it annoying that it's constantly doing that. Okay, and there it's at Oak. There's the showing it got a green light at o at Oak. So yeah, it's going to be very very shortly. Um, anyway, it's yeah. I was I'm saying it feels really comfortable. Um, my front door faces to the north, so during the heat of the day, like this is always in the shade, right where I'm at. So it stays cool right in front of my door, much cooler than it is right here where the sun hits i mean i feel oh yeah no i feel it <laughs> i feel it there is a definite temperature jump um right as i oh and it just got hotter right here because now i'm near the blacktop street no no cool pavement coating on oak oh yeah no it's notably hotter right here than it is on my door so here comes the waymo here comes our robot car i wonder if it I wonder if it sees me. Uh, yeah, I wonder if it physically sees me, but I got a feeling that it tries to figure out where I am based on the uh, based on the uh, on the GPS position. And Obama Phone Four does not have very accurate GPS, so I I can attribute some of my issues. I hope you all saw the doors pop up. So I hit the button to unlock the door, makes the doors pop out or handles pop out. Hey, Waymo. Hey, Waymo. Uh, yeah, makes the door handles pop out. Um, Got to buckle up. Good afternoon, Daniel. Destination RNL Automotive. There's a button to start ride. So I'm hit that. Heading to RNL Automotive. Please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. It is. For any questions, press the call support button to speak with a rider support agent. That is good advice. Um, on that note, I think I'm going to do that right now. By the way, it's as you see, no driver. This this should be <laughs> for those who are have not done to my any of my. Waymo ride-alongs. Yeah, there is no driver. Uh, there is the wheel and it's uh, in its warning sticker on it, which, oh, somebody peeled one of them off. That's fabulous. Um, but there's also one here. It says, uh, warning, do not pull on steering wheel. Car may stop suddenly, which could, whoa, what cruised around that corner. <laughs> uh, could, usually it kind of slows down a little more than that for corners. That wasn't bad though, to be honest. Like it, it's in a hurry. That's a good thing. Uh, not pulling steering wheel, calm it, car may stop suddenly, which would cause a collision and or serious injury. Oh, the button, by the way, that I hit, which to me looked like it has a sticker on it. To, 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 but So they've modified the play music. I, one thing I've talked about that I didn't like before is when I clicked on the thing to play music, that it brought me to a screen to tell me how to connect my phone. Yeah, I'm shooting video on my phone. I'm not trying to connect my phone to a streaming app, but I don't have streaming apps on my phone anyway. So um, now it has several different streaming services. We got pop, EDM, hip hop, R&B, which was what I listened to uh, yesterday. Quite enjoyed that. It was all new school stuff, but I still, I still enjoyed that actually. In fact, there was a song that was played from Tyler the Creator, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I like Tyler the Creator, but I don't listen to Tyler the Creator enough to recognize all his, his stuff. Um, anyway, I took a picture of the screen just to add that to, you know, songs I need to need to download, need to need to get that one in the library. Anyway, we got classical jazz, alternative, rock, Disney hits, kids pop, chill, tropical house, and the only only talk radio option, uh, NPR first. Um, I am a little disappointed that the NPR being very extremely left wing is the only like news talk option. Um, I really wish KTAR was an option just because it's local. This isn't the radio that I had, had asked Waymo for. It's like, hey, I just like to listen to the radio, but it is, um, it is, it is something. So we, we, it's decided to go down 46th Street to Palm. Um, by the way, at this point, I can, I can zoom out. It's telling me 13 minutes to drop off, not only on the screen there, but also on my app. Um, 
I can zoom out here, it'll show me the route that it has chosen. Now, one thing that's been kind of, kind of, kind of controversial, I want to say, with Waymo is some of the routes it's taking. Certainly, Waymo Driver 4, and by the way, this is the Jaguar I-Pace, which is uh, Waymo Driver 5. But Waymo Driver 4, which was the Chrysler Pacifica, had... It had issues making left-hand turns. It had issues um, driving on streets with other cars. And and um, JJ Ricks, and I'll try to put a link to one of his chan to his channel as opposed to a specific video. But um, his his videos um, did a did a really good job of. Uh, have done a really good job of documenting because he he started writing right when the program st started. In fact, I think he writing before it was started writing before it was open to the general public when it was like, and you had to request to be, you had to request to to get on a list to use the service. Um, and I think he was writing with it back then in Chandler, in a very strody cookie cutter houses. Everything looks the same. Part of suburban Chandler. Um, yeah, not a fan of neighborhoods like that. Um, but to be fair, like that's an area that has almost no public transit. So the addition of a service like this in an area like that, helpful. Um, anyway, a lot of his, 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 uh, a lot of his videos document well how Waymo just takes some super bizarre riot routings just all over neighborhoods now i've had some it takes some questionable routing when i've been on it it definitely does not use the freeway but i can get behind the, the route it wants to take uh it going down <coughs> going down uh 46 to palm and palm to 44th as opposed to just coming out oak that's something i do sometimes and um i can get behind i can get behind doing that uh you've seen how many Questionable, questionable um, spun out on fentanyl pedestrians just walk back and forth between the park and the QT and the, uh, okay, it's, it sees the kids in the crosswalk. So it's, it's stopping to yield to the kids in the crosswalk. That's, a, that's definitely a good thing. Oh my God, what if it mows down pedestrians? Yeah, it doesn't do that. That's something I see people in, in, uh, in YouTube comments, and I, I wish I would have, I should have put down on the screen because you can see the pedestrians, all those little dots in the crosswalk there on the display here. But yeah, I very much saw the pedestrians, and it very much did a good job of yielding to them, which is something that Phoenix drivers often don't do. Have, I, have, you, have, you, have, you, have you caught me mentioning that Phoenix is number one for pedestrian um, uh, injuries and fatalities uh, due to car cars hitting pedestrians uh, in the United States? Yeah, Phoenix, we're, we're number one at that. So, um, yeah, so... Um, more Waymos, uh, less idiots driving like that, human idiots driving like that, and potentially um, less children being plowed in crosswalks. So I think that could be a good thing. I, I do dig this screen, how it literally shows all the vehicles around us and how they're moving. Uh, I find it funny how you can sometimes see the, the little shape of the boxes that it assigns to the vehicles here, kind of shifting size as it drifts from like one sensor to another sensor but it still generally sees where they are and i mean it sees all of them all at once which is certainly more than my eyes can see when i'm driving a vehicle and i you know i don't have eyes out the back of my head i, I generally can't see all the vehicles on the side so um i i can certainly concede as a human driver that doesn't feel threatened by self-driving technology that um this thing sees the road a whole lot better than i do um but hey, maybe at some point Elon Musk will get those neural trans, those neural, uh, those neural implants worked out to where I have all that, all that lidar and all the lidar and all the uh, additional cameras in the uh, in a in a in, in one of these kind of cars pumped into my brain. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm not letting Elon put jack shit in my brain. Just saying. Love you, Elon, but it's not happening. Um, it's nine minutes to drop off. Uh, at this point, I really need to call support before we get to that drop off location, which is problematic. One thing that we we're trying to do when I was in the car, um, 
it was in the car. Oh, and by the way, I so I hit that button that said display, thinking it was going to take me from the music screen to the other screen, and because I touched a button that was not that screen, um, it activated this whole thing of do not try to drive the car. I wasn't trying to drive the car. I just hit a button that looked like it would interact with that screen. Uh, it would seem to me that the best thing that, that Waymo could do is just simply disconnect those buttons. I mean, I could just easily butt bump that. I could see myself easily butt bumping that hand just trying to put my cell phone in the little spot right there to hold it. So, um, yeah. Oh, by the way, the route, it, it's it, the rest of the route, it's, it's looking to go just straight down 44th Street, uh, like what used to be the 153 over to 40, uh, over to, over to, um, over to university, university over to 40th, but it's still planning on stopping in a place which is very much a no stopping zone and not a safe place to stop at 40th. So let's call driver support. Let's, let's handle that. Um, urgent ride support for safety issues, rider support for general questions. Hmm. This is, do I consider this urgent? It's seven minutes to drop off. It is a safety issue though. Or would this be rider support for general questions? I'm gonna say urgent rider support. I hate to be the guy who calls 911 for something that isn't an emergency, but I'm headed towards a scheduled drop off in seven minutes, which potentially can be much less than that, uh, depending on how quickly we go down this. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and pick urgent because we're headed, of course, if it was so urgent, I would have done it as soon as I got in the car. But anyway. Please wait. Connected to rider support. This call may be recorded for quality assurance. Uh, hey, Daniel, this is Tony with me. Hi, Tony. Notification that you hit the urgent support button. Do uh, you need me to call 911? No, 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 it's not that urgent. And I kind of felt nervous about even using that option versus the other option. And Tony, I think it was you I talked to yesterday. I see. I took a dry, I took a Waymo yesterday to this exact same destination. And do you remember me from yesterday? Um, I had, I had inadvertently um, hit the display button and I, it triggered a thing where it thought I was trying to hit a control of the car or something. And then I was kind of panicked oh, because yes. it stopped uh, in an unsafe location. Yeah, I remember, I remember your, I recognize that. your voice. So anyway, uh, in the app, it's, it's telling me in the app that it's going to try to stop in that same exact location, which is not a safe place to drop off. Uh, so. 3939 East uh, University Drive, right? Well, so, that's uh, that's the so that's my destination, no. but it's showing on the map that it's going to mm -hmm. stop on 40th Street, just south of University, just right there on the road. They're going to pull over and try to let me out at the curb, and that's like one of those strode type things where there's not a there's not a parking lane, there's not a stopping lane, and it's right south of the intersection. People just turn around that corner and they just go and they don't look. And this car came so close to being rear-ended numerous times while I was in it, so. If mm -hmm. I, if I, right, I, yeah, right. so I do, okay. so I kind of considered it urgent that we not that we not stop there, <laughs> you know, before yeah, we stop there. I remember. Thank you so much for reporting that. And actually, you still have the option to edit the drop off there. Yeah, you were mentioning oh, that, well, and you were going to walk me through it. I was so yeah. panicked by the fact that I was there that I, I couldn't do that. But I think we can. You can walk me through that now. Yes, please. Uh, um, is your application open? It is. And, yes. Uh, you can hit the the my trip option on the lower left. Okay. And, now I, uh, I understand, sir. I, I understand. I do have a little visual impairment, so it's a it's a kind of a struggle for me to use the phone. So okay, I'm <laughs> my trip. Okay, I found it. I clicked it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also my phone and is. Then, uh, yeah, and then swipe up so that you can see the okay uh, the got it got it okay so it says r and all automotive drop off is that okay i need to click edit stops correct uh-huh uh -huh. okay correct. edit stops okay yeah it brought up the screen that it saw which is why i'm contacting you where it shows where where it's telling me to walk to r and l automotive which is still not i, I agree okay. with you all not wanting right. to stop there um, yeah. Yeah. Have you it shows where it's going to the current drop up. No. Do I go back to where it says full map? Yeah. Please, okay, my please, bad. Please All right. Uh, one page. I'm no, sorry. No, no worries, that's fine. Okay, review review drop off. Okay, so I need to click review drop off. Okay, mm -hmm. do I need yeah, to just click where it says off. Okay, so the clicking review drop off doesn't do anything. Do I need to click where it says R&L Automotive? 
Um, I don't know where yes, I need to yeah, click. Okay. R, R and L automotive. Sorry, I am autistic, so you're going to have to be like ridiculously specific. I have some disabilities, which is why I'm using, which is why I'm using this service. Okay, so choose on map. And I pull it from the list. Oh goodness! And it zoomed the map all the way out instead of keeping it in the yes, note. And we got be, we got it two. It will be on the map, and then there should oh be like goodness. an option there to oh the, my gosh the address okay. or you know, For in the address or the business name. But instead of uh, or once you type it in, oh, it never lets me. It never lets me. Option. It never brings up my keyboard to type. It just. It's always just, it's very difficult to use on this, and I think it's just because I have but, such a okay. substandard but, phone. But it provides, I always have to click. It Maybe if I, you the, uh, let me, let me, the map. it did. Let me try and see if I can click on, on Chevron. It never brings up a thing for me to type. I would like to be able to type an address, but I always have to click on a map, and I struggle with that. Um, mm, it's all right, I somehow I got off of edit trip. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with mm. doing this, sir. And it would really be helpful if you could do this. And I didn't have to do this because like I said, I have a disability and we're getting really close yeah, to that unsafe yeah. drop off. We're getting really, really, really close. Um, mm, I just fully understand. Oh, it's, it's pulling there right well. now. It's going to do it. Oh my Lord. We're at a red light. I, I, I can't do this edit thing, dude. I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm sorry. It's a dis it's a problem. And we're we're about it's we're waiting right, for the red left arrow and it's gonna stop. So it's drop off and it's gonna stop mm. with a whole with a it's, it's gonna stop with a semi behind us. It it it, it um just uh relax can, can, I'll be the one to assist okay. you. But Thank it, you, please. I just want to inform you first that uh there is actually no option on our end to edit the drop off. Okay, there needs to be that. There the really, way. really needs mm -hmm. to be that, sir. Just saying for safety right. issues. Because not yeah, everybody I'll, I'll sure. has, has the ability to do that under the pressure, and I'm certainly one that doesn't. I very much struggle with using apps because of my mental disability and my visual disability. It's very difficult. Like, I, I make sure I do all that before I'm in the car, but to do that in a moving vehicle is something that I just, I, um, you're asking me to do too much. And the fact that you, as customer service, can't do that for me is, I see it as a problem. Just saying. So I fully understood. Uh, no worries. So we're about ready to stiff it. Yes, I mean, do what yeah, you got to do uh, so we don't stop, so we don't stop right in front of the semi, which I think it's going to do. And it's doing it. Yep, it's stopping. Oh, oh Lord. Okay. Uh, just, uh, Peter built uh, nearly hit us. He had to jam on his brakes to not, sure not hit us. It's not clear. Sorry. Yeah, we just about uh, had a garbage truck plow into us because it did an unsafe stop. That was a Phoenix City of Phoenix public works truck. Uh, just um, pulling a uh, pulling a tractor keep thing. Yourself, uh, keep your seatbelt fastened. Oh, my seatbelt is fastened. Yeah. But this is yeah. why I called, and this is why I hit it as an urgent thing because I was really hoping that you could fix it before this happened, and it's still it's happened, and y'all had like eight minutes. Sorry, I'm yeah, I'm in, I'm the, kind of in we'll be, I'm kind of panicked right now. Yeah. Uh, relax. I'll be sending our roadside assistance there uh, team there uh, to take it the rest of the way on on your decision. You from, you really you you you. you you really can't just simply put in another destination from from where you're sitting at your control panel you can't just do that mm, yeah i don't really have that option so oh my we'll goodness notifying, the, uh, notifying our team here to complete the trip in manual all right i'm be, well um, should, I, should i keep trying to do this because i'm really struggling i just i'm very struggling to do the and like you said like mm -hmm. you're walking me through it i'm very struggle on it mm -hmm. but i'm i'm trying at a drop off oh no need, no no need to to force uh, you know it's fine. well but i don't know how long it's going to take your safety team to get here and right now i'm sitting in a dangerous location I, can you see out? Can you look out the cameras and see what the car sees and see the vehicles? There's another city of Phoenix Public Works vehicle that just about plowed into us. There's, there's like this is an industrial area and industrial vehicles come flying around this corner. There's some coming more. There's a blue car coming. Okay, he sees us. Uh, He's trying. Yeah. To, we're creating yeah, a very yeah, dangerous yeah. traffic situation right now. And like this car, what it needs to do right now is go. It doesn't need to sit, it just needs to go. It doesn't even matter where it needs to go. Do you understand that? Like I was a professional yeah, cab driver yeah. for a long time before I had my mental breakdown, but I mean, I still am a good driver. And I'm saying right now, what this car is doing is sitting. And what this car needs to be doing is going. Like seriously, there just needs to be a button on the, on the thing that says go. 
Uh, I don't need to be trying to enter an address or trying to manipulate a, a difficult to operate GUI map. I just need a button that says go. Like seriously, just it just needs to go forward uh, and turn right on the next street and then pull over on, the, on that street, which is safe for it to pull over on. This is not a safe location I'm in. I mean, it's not. I. Okay. Yeah, I fully understand it. That's that's actually the reason why I'm I'm sending the roadside assistance right now, uh, which is uh, his name is Eric. I uh, will be arriving soon in a yellow vest. Uh, you will actually see the um, I estimate the time of arrival there. Uh, I don't I don't see. Okay, roadside uh, so assistance is on the way. It says roadside assistance and, uh, is on the way. Please keep your seat belt fastened. I have to get about three inches from the screen to read it. Um, okay, okay. Keep your seat and belt fastened and remain in the seat unless there's an urgent. Uh, urgent need to exit i'm kind of i'm not gonna lie i'm kind of feeling an urgent need to exit dude while there's nobody nearly ready to plow into me before there's more people ready to plow into me if i if i exit right now oh jesus here they come all right uh if i if i get out the next time there's a break in traffic is roadside assistance still going to come because i think roadside assistance needs to see this here and they need to come talk to me yeah, they will uh, still go there and will be notified there. Okay. And if you decide, I, I, to I want to get out right now. I think it's safe right now. So thank you, Eric. Right. I, um, I think yeah, it's. I think uh, it's Tony. But, uh, Tony, I'm sorry. Tony, Tony. I've, oh shit! Here come cars. Here come cars. Here's here come cars. Okay, uh, that guy's like that guy. Them, you have no the, idea what it's like the, to have people coming around this double left-hand turn lane, and they're they expect to drive fast, and then suddenly there's a vehicle stopped in a no-stopping zone. Uh, I'm seeing that on the rear end camera. Oh, Jesus, here, it's, so it's thinking, scary. Really okay, thinking, uh, okay. Uh, I'm out. I will be waiting next slide for roadside assistance. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Wow. I should have done that as soon as I got in the car. Um, I don't know why I couldn't get the app to, to work. Um, why I couldn't get the app to work. I just, I struggle, and I've mentioned before on this vlog, I struggle with apps. Um, I've never, I've never seen a prompt to type in an address. Okay, see, my exiting the vehicle got the vehicle to just go because what the vehicle needed to do was just go. Um, and I am amazed that like I didn't have an option, and it, it just went and it turned right. It just went and it turned right. Now I'm wondering if that vehicle is going to pull over, and roadside assistance is going to come, or if uh, I wonder if this is Waymo roadside assistance coming here. No, I don't think so. I think that Vance is Walker on a I am cotton mouth that panic on that and probably I haven't been staying hydrated adequately at home because I don't really have any bottled drinks to drink at home right now because I haven't been able to go grocery shopping. I wonder if it just pulled over here and pulled over to wait for uh No, that robot just went on about its way to pick up other passengers. So it's it's gone now see i was all i was asking it to do which customer service didn't seem capable of, of affecting was hey it is unsafe to be stopped here and that was a very unsafe location to be stopped here to be stopped right there it's trying to tell it hey you just you just need to go just needs to go to the next street turn right and pull over here's winslow street which we you saw the waymo vehicle turned right and just pull over probably not block the fire hydrant i don't know if that's part of their algorithm but you should never park in front of a fire hydrant but you know if it would have just simply stopped right here in front of the fire hydrant or just past there on the other side of the fire hydrant right here on Winslow which is a safe parking lane um, I could have got out I don't have a problem with walking from here to Rob's shop I mean there's the bus stop right there oh and there goes the way but that's probably the one I, that just left me uh, it just went around the block and went towards Tempe where I'm sure it's got other customers it needs to go pick up but yeah, definitely that was a safety hazard um, where it stopped. It was very much a safety hazard where it stopped. This is where the bus lets me off. And I mean, I often talk about, hey, the bus, the bus stop should be farther, you know, should be closer for transfer purposes. But I get that the reason that this bus stop is this far up is so people can turn there and have enough time to see, oh shit, there's a bus, and have enough room to move over. That's not where the Waymo stopped. The Waymo driver, I want to say it stopped, I think on the other side of this sign here, um, a sign that says adopt street. I want to say the Waymo driver stopped pretty much right here. So the back end of the car was pretty much right here. So not a lot of space between where that car, where the back end of that car was and, and turning into 40th street, 
I mean, granted, you and it's a lot of industrial vehicles, a lot of city vehicles. Um, another one of City of Phoenix Public Works. Uh, same kind of thing, pulling a trailer. That was the first vehicle. That one slammed on its brakes. It nearly hit us. Uh, now, I have it had, if it had hit, hit us, I would probably be a rich man for that. Now, I'm not doing this. I'm not trying to create a lawsuit. I'm not that guy, I swear to God. But but I got, and I was genuinely nervous that that, that truck was going to hit us. So pops of that city of Phoenix driver for slamming on his brakes. That's a hazard he shouldn't have had to deal with. Um, anyway, yeah, people coming north at least could see it. Once it had stopped, once it was already stopped there. They're probably wondering, what the fuck is that idiot doing stopped there? But at least they could see it. But people turning right, this is very much a blind, a blind corner. And people... People, human drivers don't, you know, this is the problem with robot drivers. The problems with human drivers are completely different. Human drivers, like a, you know, a human driver would, I don't think a human driver would ever think to stop there. But a, a human driver will turn right here, anticipating that these lanes are clear because they're always clear, and do this maneuver nice and quick, and, and then, oh shit, the fucks are a stop car there and slam on their brakes. Or, or, will swerve and change lanes while there's somebody tailgating them and they'll tailgate the person. So, I mean, fortunately, there was no accident today from that. The, the biggest issue that I think, though, was this double left-hand turn lane. There is a double left-hand turn lane because there's a lot of traffic flow that goes from westbound University to southbound 40th Street. So, and it's a lot of big vehicles. I mean, we got these, you know, killing machine, I'm compensating for a small penis trucks here. But I mean, as you saw, there were a lot of, a lot of trash vehicles, which makes sense. There's, uh, um, there's a landfill just north of here. Uh, the way, giant waste management landfill is to the north of here. So it makes sense that those vehicles are, are using this route. Um, we yeah, have these people that got this double left turn lane there. And granted, they can see that that vehicle is stopped there, but that's not where they're looking. They're not expecting that. Because who the fuck would stop there? That's not a place you should stop. I mean, there's not a sign that says no stopping. And to be fair, it's not marked any differently than a parking lane. And that's something I've always wondered about. There's not any signs that say no stopping. And there's not any signs that say no parking. But it's pretty common knowledge to Phoenix drivers that where there's a traffic lane that close to the curb, you don't stop. I don't know what the actual law is about it. I'd like to look into that. But I'm pretty sure that if I stopped there and there was an accident and somebody plowed into me, I couldn't be like, oh, he rear-ended me. Um, if his dash cam showed that I was stopped there for no fucking reason, I think I would probably be getting the ticket for that. For, an, 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 you know, especially if I was parked, if I was straight up parked. And the car was parked there for a while. So yeah, that double, and you see, man, a lot of people are being in those those things. All right, this guy's kind of, you know, get across the crosswalk all we can. Anyway, so yeah, every time that light cycle, we had packed double left-hand turn lanes of people coming, and then of course it creates a situation where, you know, there's vehicles, there's vehicles packed to the right, so they can't just change lanes because there's vehicles in those lanes. So, oh, let's see if anything's happened with my car. Let's see if Rob's here. That was a bunch of time wasted that really should have been here dealing with Rob and my car. It's 4:43. I don't believe that Waymo, right? I don't believe that Rain Waymo's coming there to talk to me. I just don't. I stayed in that area for a minute. But my time is pretty valuable right now. I need to come deal with my car. Let's try to. And my Saturn has not moved. And Rob's shop is not open. And it doesn't look like any of these vehicles have moved since I was here yesterday. It just doesn't. You know, the worst thing is that he's not here keeping his office hours. Now, granted, he doesn't have posted office hours anymore. And I don't know what Rob is dealing with personally. He hasn't told me that. Instead, he's been stringing me along about I'll have your car fixed. Um, but I, there's a lot of things I need to get out of there. Mainly, mainly laundry and, 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 um, and an old-ass iPhone that I really need. For myself right now and anyway I that whole thing granted I probably should have drank more than the little bit of water I had before I left my place so probably set myself up for being dehydrated but when I get into panic situations like that or where my and granted like my mental issues make me not deal with those kind of situations as well as as normal people would deal with that but I, I ask and maybe put in the comments how, how would would that freak you out 
or is it just me being being you know mental <laughs> I, 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 I can I can own up to my own mental issues I can but um, was that just me overreacting yeah I wish I'd have turned the camera around so you all could have seen that that big Peterbilt dump truck and seen how forcibly he had to jam on his brakes when that Waymo just simply stopped where no normal, where no driver should be stopping with, now granted, he shouldn't have been right on our ass like that, but he was, and that's normal. And yeah, I'm hoping when I go through and I watch the video that I can freeze frame it and zoom in enough to read what vehicle number it was. I don't know where I'm gonna go with that data if I'm gonna try to contact the Depart Phoenix Depart Department of Public Works and uh, Phoenix Department of Public Works, if I'm going to try to contact them, and if I'm going to, uh, if I'm going to, um, I don't know, try to find out who was driving that, <laughs> interview him. Hey, what was that moment like for you, dude, when that robot car just jammed on its brakes and stopped right in front of you in, a, in what I would consider a no-stopping zone? What'd you think of that? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they're not going to just freely give out who was driving that car if I contact the city of Phoenix Public Works, but I don't know. I got a lot of time on my hands right now being fired from Amazon. I mean, granted, I need to get myself working. Oh, and I, I'm still, you know, I'm still getting a lot of recruiter texted emails. So, I mean, I got job options. I'm not even, I'm not even focused on that right now. Right now, my biggest focus is going to be trying to get my Amazon job back. And also, my focus is going to be, you know, I always look at those yellow lines as w where I should be walking as a pedestrian. And it just occurred to me that... That's probably where you stop and wait for your order when they tell you to pull forward a jack-in-the-box. And then I'm not helping those people by always using that as a walkway, but that looks like a walkway to me. Um, oh, goodness. Boy, I'm just like having a rerun of yesterday. <laughs> Slightly different panics. Oh, I never talked about what all happened at the bank, by the way. I should do that at some point. But right now, I just need to get some, get some cool drinks in me. Very disappointed with Rob. At this point, I need to try to call him on the phone. Um, wow, sorry for the news. We're closed on Sundays. This place used to be open 24-7. Um, 4.47. I mean, I don't know. I don't see That's what I think. I have no way of knowing if, he, if he's even come to the shop at all this week. I don't know what's going on with Rob. I need to try to call him. But it's, I feel like he's kind of avoiding me in this situation where it's kind of a desperate thing. Anyway, thanks for coming with me on that rather exciting journey. I can't believe that took 46 minutes. To, oh, um, I should have hit that button. I should have hit that button sooner. I do find it to be a major fan of Waymo that, that they're making me try to edit in a moving vehicle my destination on software that they don't know how much I'm struggling to use. Why Why don't they, as customer support, just have the ability on a, like he said, he could see out the camera. Why can't he just somewhere just manually type in an address from another piece of software that's tied to that of, and why doesn't, why isn't there just sent the option of go? What are we doing right now that's wrong? We're stopped. What do we need to do? We need to go, you know. Um, anyway, at this point, I'm just kind of talking in circles. So I'm going to head in, get myself uh so something to eat, something to drink, try to decompress and try to call Rob. Anyway, thanks for coming with me on the ride.